Holla ballers, what's going on? It's Preacher, and we're doing some Blood DK now in 5.2, continuing our tank themed week. You'll be glad to know not much changed for us in patch 5.2 as far as Blood DKs are concerned. So I'm going to take this opportunity to teach you about Death Strike, because Death Strike is the bread and butter of the Blood DK. Is what makes the whole class tick. Using it right makes you a god. Using it wrong makes you a tool. Nobody wants to be a tool. Uh, and as such, the 5.1 guide still completely relevant, guys. The rules, the regulations, the gearing, all completely the same. Nothing to worry about at all. Still two choices in how we gear our character. We can either go for avoidance heavy or hit heavy. Mastery is still our number one stat. As you can see, I'm going to show you this guy here. He's only a 4.63 item level. But that's no big deal. He's tanked everything and a little bit of gemming there. Going for a little bit of mastery in all sockets, getting some bonuses and stuff like that. Or you can gem out some pure mastery. That is entirely up to you. No big deal. As you can see there, gemming pure mastery there, picking up a set bonus along the way. And of course, enchanting for mastery. The other choice is really, do you go for more dodge and parry or do you go for hit? Hit is the go-to for me. I think if you're not rolling with hit, then it's either encounter specific or you're sticking to your old guns. It's just not the way the game works now. Simply put, it's not how it rolls. You don't worry about expertise and that's because of Death Strike. A lot of people fuck up Death Strike. A lot of pitfalls to fall into. A lot of things that screw us over, which make us think we're doing the right thing when in fact we are absolutely not doing the right thing. And in fact, we're just being a general big bag of bullshit. Don't want to do that. Death Strike. Here it is. Costs us two runes and unholy and a frosty rune. Focuses dark power, blah, 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 blah. What it does. Okay. <sighs> Heals you for 20% of the damage you have sustained from non-player sources during the preceding 5 seconds. 5 seconds. Bear that in mind, we're going to be talking about that a lot through this video. A minimum of at least 7% of your maximum health. An absolute minimum every time you do it. This attack cannot be parried. So it can be dodged. So we generally want enough expertise so we don't get dodged. We don't want that. We don't want missed death strikes. That is a big pile of bullshit as well. But it cannot be parried, so we've no real reason to go past the expertise for dodge. That's 6%. Don't really want that whatsoever. Now, the other important aspect of this is, of course, our blood shield. Each time you heal yourself with Death Strike while in blood presence, you gain 102% of the amount healed, which is 20% of the damage taken, remember, as a physical damage absorption shield. So we have two aspects to our Death Strike. One a heal, one a blood shield, all based off the damage we took in the last five seconds. So that's where it becomes important. First of all, it's like the big problems that people have with Blood DKs and where they go wrong. Firstly, it's this. They play like a DPS. <clears throat> you are not a DPS, although you do do a lot of damage. And they go, ooh, 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 I don't want any runes. Runes are bad, bro. Runes are bad. Oh, I've got no runes, therefore I must be using all my resources collect correctly. No. Wrong. Don't want to do that. Spamming Death Strike mindlessly is going to lead you to take a hell of a lot more damage than you actually need. Okay, people who spam Death Strike as soon as it's off cooldown will take more damage and make themselves very susceptible to being killed. And we'll explain that shortly. The other pitfall people fall into is holding onto their runes for far too long. They're like, uh, uh, do enough damage to get a decent blood shield. Let me tell you guys, there is very, very, very rarely you will run into the situation where you get the perfect blood shield. And as such, sitting on your runes for until the end of time will in fact mean you're just taking damage without absorbing or healing anything. Don't want to do that either. To extremes, people tend to go one way or the other. What we're after is that awesome balance in the middle. That's what's going to make us super fucking awesome every single time. Now, we are after one thing, people. One thing while tanking on a DK or tanking on any class. And that is smooth damage intake. Silky smooth. That's what we want. Silky smooth damage intake is the way to go. What do I mean by that? We are, of course, expecting to take damage. We are a tank. That is our job. We take damage. We take it on the chin. That's how we deal with things. What we don't want is our health to go from 100% down to 20% in one hit. That is bad news. We don't want to be going up and down like a yo-yo. What that does is it causes all sorts of things to occur. Mainly, your healers will start spamming expensive big heals, running them out of mana much quicker. Also, we start blowing cooldowns, either personals or using the rest of the raids cooldowns in order to keep ourselves alive. What we want is to go up and down in our safety zone of about 60% HP and maintain there, okay? We want to go nicely up and down so they can still use their efficient heals. They're not blowing cooldowns unnecessarily. That's what we want. Nice and smooth. No dangers, no crying, no worries. As a Blood DK, we are generally in direct control of that. They are the Antichrist. Compared to the monks, they do things in a completely different way. Both are viable. 
Now, the big weakness of the DK has always been super fast, super amazing burst damage. Why? Because we can't react fast enough to it, and we tend to die very quickly. You might remember fights such as Shannox in the Firelands, fights such as Balrog in the Firelands, tend to not be favourable towards DKs due to the immense quick burst damage. However, you could have classes like Prop Paladins, who could easily solo tank those fights, even though they are designed for two in some cases. Not particularly Shannox, for those of you who go a little bit... OCD on what I say. Blood DKs work by planning and thinking about their death strikes. As I said, we want a happy medium. A happy medium. Remember that five second rule. There are different ways of doing this. Some people prefer an add-on, which generally will pop up on the screen and show you what your next blood shield is. That worries me a little bit. People tend to be looking for just super huge blood shields all the time. Then you create a kind of wave where you take a lot of damage, huge blood shield, and again, we're spiking. As you can see, you can follow my mouse there. We go loads of damage. If we imagine this is our health bar across the middle, we're going all the way down. Huge blood shield and down again. And huge blood shield. What we want is a nice ripple effect going across our screen there. Beautiful. That's what we're after. So how do we do that? Again, you can get an add-on which is going to show you your blood shield. I personally have managed to work this for the longest time since I've tanked. I tanked heavily in Cataclysm on my DK. All her current heroic content there, Sinestro and so on and so forth. I tanked all those bad boys. Uh, basically using MSBT and my own health bar. Your own health bar is right in front of you guys. Use and abuse it. You might as well. Also, boss timers are important. So let's talk about standard tanking. We don't have some uh, scary ball of death coming at us. How do we cope with that? Generally, you're going to be tanking away. Now, it's always good to have a death strike ready to go. Especially in unpredictable circumstances, okay? You want to keep a blood rune ready and generally a death strike ready. That's always a good place to be. Because as soon as we see our health bar, or whatever add-on you're using, start dipping to that 60%, I know I'm in good shape to throw out a nice big blood shield. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If my damage remains pretty constant, incoming, and I have no big worries at all, as soon as I come ready for another death strike, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fire that death strike off, because in two seconds time, I've got another death strike waiting for me. And that's going to give you nice, consistent blood shields that aren't rushed, aren't overwritten, and not spammed, which is the good place to be. Now... That's the kind of thing you should be getting used to while you're doing your average tanking. It's just having a death strike ready. Watch your health bar. Oh, I took a little bit of damage there. I'm down to my 60%. I'm out of my safety margin. I'm going to go ahead and throw out a death strike. And then as soon as the death strike is about ready to come back up anyway, boom, I'm going to fire that bad boy off and nobody's going to be any the wiser because in a few seconds I'll have another one ready to go. And I'm making best use then of that five second rule. I'm making best use of it. Now, the other way to deal with this, is, which is what the, the really good tanks do, is they monitor their boss timers immensely. I mean crazy immensely. They understand the fight, and they know that certain aspects of this encounter are going to cause you big trouble. So we're going to move over ahead to our other training dummy, who today will be the big dragon of death. We'll call him whatever we want. Not Deathwing, that fight sucks. Any other dragon is relevant. Dragons tend to breathe on us, which is a great example. Most bosses have some ability which fucking sucks and hurts a lot. Think about Thrash. Uh, from the Shire of Fear, anything along those lines, or maybe even just coming out of your dance phase on the Emperors, that kind of encounter, where we have some big thing about to happen to us. Good thing about that, guys, is we have a timer. We know when it's coming. So what we can do is plan to have some good death strikes in. What I can say to you is, oh, in a few seconds... I've got my boss timers. Let's pretend our Frost Fever is a boss timer. I know that in a few seconds, I'm going to get breathed on. I'm going to get hit hard in the face. Something's going to happen. So what I could do then is make sure that I've got my death strikes ready. And what I'm going to do is simple. I want to have a big blood shield ready when this ability occurs. I want to absorb it all. Therefore, I'm not taking this big thing in the face. Suppose I've got anti-magic shell on cooldown. There's always someone out there who goes, you could just EMS it, Preacher. Yes, you could, but unless it's on cooldown or whatever. But this is about consistent tanking. So what we'll find is, good blood DKs will go, hmm, you know what? It's five seconds until this badass dragon's gonna breathe on me like a son of a bitch. What I'm gonna do is allow him to use his normal melee attacks on me for those next five seconds. I'm gonna say, oh, okay, let's pretend we're almost there. Seven, six, right, this is our breath of death. Five seconds, melee, 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 taking that damage. One second left, boom, big ass blood shield. He breathes on me, absorb the shit out of it. Obviously, that's 104,000 there without taking any damage whatsoever. That's what we're looking for, is to take the big bulk of that damage out of there and absorb it. 
wonderful way of playing, guys. You should be planning how your Death Strike works. You actually use the damage of the encounter to your advantage. All right. Very simply put, guys, if you want to get better with your Blood Shield and your Death Striking, is do not be the DPSer. Spamming away and sitting here for six, seven seconds without being able to death strike is a bad situation to be in. You don't want to do that at all. That means you are completely unprepared, and that's when you start panicking and popping icebound, and then your AMS is gone, and your bone shield's gone, you're sacrificing your pets, you're doing all sorts of crazy nonsense. Don't want to do that either. And also, don't sit here like this, just with all your runes ready, like, oh my god. Oh my god, something might happen, something might happen. I want that perfect blood shield. I'm waiting for just big, stupid, meaty blood shields all the time. I haven't had enough damage, I haven't had enough damage. Remember, after five seconds, any damage you previously took is just erased from the memory. Doesn't work. And therefore, you're just taking damage in the face without absorbing or healing anything. Which is considerably worse. You don't want to do that either. Bear in mind what your encounters do. Is there something you need to be worried about? Five seconds. You have five seconds before these abilities hit to build yourself a big ass blood shield and then boom, death strike it, get ready to take it. And then of course you will take a lot of damage anyway from these big attacks and instant death strike afterwards is not only going to heal you up but allow healers just to land heals without panicking. Wonderful style of play from the Blood DK. I'm going to jump into a couple of encounters now where I do this and just give you a, a general idea. Alright guys, let's go.